learning objective for this video is to analyze the velocity of an object relative to its time. Now to do that, we are going to use ticker timers. And from our ticker timers, we're gonna produce a velocity time graph. <clears throat> now to get your head around the idea of how a ticker timer works, I'm gonna throw out a little analogy here. So we've got a little uh, painting truck here and the, the, um, the painter's not, you know, the, um, the sharpest tool in the shed. So he's left one of his um, the lids of his paint tin open. And as a result, he's got paint running through his ute and it's dripping out the back. And as he drives off, this yellow paint is dripping on the, on the, uh, on the road. So the question is, from these little drips that he's left behind, can we determine the velocity that he was driving at? The answer is yes, of course we can. So if we measure the total distance that he's traveled, which is from his first to his last dot, uh, we can say there are 17 dots. And that means um, there's an interval uh, between all of those and there's 16 of them. And if we know exactly how long each drip takes, so let's say it is five seconds, we can say it's 16 times five seconds. So it took a total of 18 seconds. So using our formula, he did 24 meters in eight seconds, gives us three meters per second on average, of course. So, okay, so I'm gonna introduce you to the ticker timer, which is this little device here. It is essentially a uh, electromagnet, electromagnets in here, and there's a bar up the top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, plug it into the AC terminal of the power pack. It needs to be AC because AC is an alternating current, which, you know, in simplicity means in terms of the electromagnet is it's going to turn it on and off 50 times a second so it is going to go this bar here is going to be attracted to the ele electromagnet just in here and it is going to go and make a little tapping sound every time it turns on and off 50 times a second so i'll turn it on now and we'll see some problems we might encounter obviously it's not tapping i've got it at eight volts that's not the issue the issue here is my bar is not at the right uh, tension here so i'm going to tighten it up And you can see that I'm starting to get that really nice clicking sound. Watch what happens if I tighten it too much. That's probably about the ideal tightness. I'm too tight and it's not going to work. So you need to find that right little sweet spot where it's going to be tapping nice and easily. Now, what we need to do is thread our ticker timer tape through this little slot there and under the ink pad so that when the bar taps, it taps onto the ink pad and onto the paper. You can see it's creating these little dots. So I'll just give you a little demo here. And you can see it's creating these little dots on here 50 times a second. Now obviously it's gonna get very noisy here so during the classroom when you've got a whole bunch of these going on. So what you really need to do is when you're not using it, turn your ticket timer off. Now, there's a couple of little troubleshooting things that I want to run you through. Please make sure that you put your paper underneath. It's a little bit fiddly, but make sure you get it underneath the ink, ink paper. Now, if you find your, you can see mine was a little bit off center. So this red plate shifts a little bit so you can get the dimple of the plate right in the center of your paper, that helps. But you might find that on this paper, everyone's been using that uh, part of the blot paper. So it's run out. So you can shift it off center to get a nice bit of the ink pad. You can also rotate this to get a part that no one's really used. There's a couple of little ways just to fix that up. So what we're going to do is, and I recommend you get some, uh, your, your partners in your group to assist you with this. Get one person just to hold the uh, ticket timer in place by its little handle, another person to turn the power pack on, and you can pull through your tape. Now the trick with this is pulling it through, at, you're trying to do this at a constant rate. And I can see that I've got my little dots about probably close to about two centimeters apart. I'm very happy with that section there. So that's the section that I'll be using. I, I can see that they're pretty close together. That's the section I want. It's, it's going to work perfectly for this exercise. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, draw up some little axes here. The first one on our uh, Y axis is going to be displacement. On our X was time. Now find your bit of ticker timer tape and you might find that a couple of your dots um, aren't very clear but um, find a nice big section where the intervals are nice and clear. And if there are some uh, light ones, just get a pen and mark them out so they're a little bit darker. 
so they're a bit easier to work with. See, I had a couple that were uh, causing a bit of problem. So now that um, I've done that, I'm going to choose my first point, just draw a little line uh, behind it, and then I'm going to count five intervals, draw another line. You can think of it as every, after every uh, fifth dot, draw a line. But make sure it's just behind the line. So you go five, and do that for maybe about, uh, you know, as, as many as you can. Uh, I was only able to really to get about five. Then I want you to label them from one to five in, in, that, in the correct order so that we don't forget what order they're in after we chop them up. So chop down those lines, and we're going to stick them into our uh, axes in their correct order. Now, if you've done it nice and neatly like I have, uh, nice and uh, uniformly, you'll see that they all fall within a small section. And to get a really precise uh, scale on there, I'm just going to put in the little millimetre increments. Now, the beauty of these, uh, this graph is that it is to scale. So everything you read on the displacement there is um, as, as it says. So every little increment I'm drawing there is a millimetre. So I can see now that my range of values falls between that one centimetre interval there. So that's perfect for me. Now I'm going to get my ruler and line it up with the dots and draw a little increment down the bottom. That's going to be our first time interval. I'm going to do that all the way across. Now because each dot was 1 50th of a second and we've done five intervals, that's going to equate to that time interval just being 0.1. So we can fill that in down the bottom. So you can use now these instructions as a uh, reference to what you need to do. Um, following that, you can, uh, you'll need to analyze your velocities and you need to mark the uh, initial and the final, oh, sorry, the maximum and minimum velocities you got and work an average from that. Uh, once you've got your average uh, velocity, you've completed this learning activity.